So what I'm looking to do now, I'm shouting across the room because I haven't got a mic yet, it's one of the things I'm going to try and get through my uh, coffee page that I've set up. I'll put some details on that, but that's going to be the first thing I'm saving towards, to get a decent mic. So hopefully you can hear me, I'll raise my voice a bit. But what I've got is I've got this stake now. Now the shape of the stake is kind of unimportant, it's just a bit of scaffold uh, that I bent because that's useful in some jobs. Sort of useful in this, but not too much because we've got that curve, but you know, a straight bit of bar would do just as well holding a vice. Um, you just have to move it around a bit differently. No hardship there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm this up generally and I'm going to try and start to bring this edge down and just fold, uh, gently, sorry, bring that around. It's a little flat bit there, I'll keep an eye on that and we'll, we'll dress him out probably a bit later. But I'm just going to bring that edge down, bring that edge down and keep going until it's around. Uh, more of a thigh sort of shape to the dimensions that I need and then we can talk about what's happening at the edges of this plate and we can dress this out as well. So I won't do a lot of talking on this because I doubt you'll hear me over the noise of the forge. Um, I'll just crack on um, and if anything important comes up I'll try and come over to the camera and uh, show what's going through my mind uh, as the job unfolds and shows me whether it's going to work or not. So I'll get the forge lit and then we'll get straight into that. So we are after those few minutes, few moments um, tapping there. Uh, I've just done. You can see how the basic shape, I hope in this light, is starting to come together. Now there's a lot of dressing off to be done here, and some folk do it warm when they're over there. Other folk do it uh, cold or colder. It's still too hot for me to touch, and, and dress this shape back into it. I, I just find it's the way it goes on the day that it is. Sometimes the shape just takes place wonderfully over there and other times it needs a bit of tinkering and a bit of help. You can see here that what I've done is it's catching the light, I think, if I can get my finger to it. There, you can see there's an edge. It's sort of going around and then crank and it's just come straight round like that. And that's because this bit's been hit a bit hard and moved around a bit, but that's all good. We can dress that back out. And you know, you've got to go careful with the material, depends on what you're using. If it's a carbon steel, uh, get it nice and warm and tap it back in. Um, if it's a mild like this, you can do some of the heavy lifting whilst it's still cold. But lifting these bits up can be a bit of a, a chore sometimes on, on mild um, or high carbon when it's cold, because I, I want to lift those out a bit. I don't really want to push that down. Uh, no, I'm going to lift those out and then dress it round. But the final shape I'm trying to achieve here, let's grab some chalk, is, yeah, you can just about see that. If I draw on now, I use this as a chalkboard. What, what I'm looking to do is, is what I don't want to create with the shape across the, the entirety, the entire width of the piece, is I don't want a, a shape like that. I don't just want a U. Um, that you know your leg will go in it will flop out and you see this with a lot of um, be careful here. you see with a lot of armors that perhaps have been made uh, on machines and rolled you get this kind of shape to them what we need to do is we need this is going to be exaggerated but it just shows the point we want them to come in a bit like that difficult to do on a red hot piece of steel but you'll get the impression we want it to come around and what will happen is you put it on your leg it will feel like it's holding your leg like it's gripping your leg rather than your leg just flapping around inside a drain pipe and um, sometimes what will happen oh it's going to be too hot I think it will Let's see I'll find a glove what you'll see on some of the um, on some machined armors you tend to see this a lot if it's been made on a wheel um, is, is it will come round and then there'll be the hinge here and the hinge is what they'll try and get that sense of security from your armour in. Now, that, that, that's what will give you that attempt. Ooh, ow, ee, ah, ooh. Oh, that was warm. That's what they'll try and do to give you that sense of security because then obviously you've got buckles here and a strap that comes around. But the armour itself ought to just ever so gently grip the leg. 
And that's what we're looking to create here. I don't want these edges to go flat. I want them to come around across the entirety of the circumference and just grip the leg a bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tidy things up, bash around in here a bit to lift this, this whole portion here. Took a bit of a hiding. He's got a dent in him. So I want to lift that back out. So I, I tend to work just on the outside here on the flat, just lift it off slightly and see if that'll get us there. So I'll get straight into the work over this anvil. That's warm enough to uh, not be touched, but um, cool enough that you know it might need a reheat, particularly if it's a carbon um, steel, um, or if not, work it if it's a little bit of movement like this, and then get to normalizing the material. So I'm going to tidy it all up, get my, my lines uniform and, and you know less wibbly wobbly, and then what I can do is I can start to figure out the sizing of the piece. So I'll crack on with that just while we're on this view, unless I need to move across you can't see it there can you I might angle the camera if I have to go onto there but we'll just crack on a quick swig of tea absolutely imperative have a swig of tea now a, a big missing bit just to what I'm talking about in, in, in my hammer collection some nice long reach it's a nice long reach hammers. The ones, this is about the longest neck that I have. So I have to get inventive sometimes with the way, where's he gone? With the way that I'm working. What I would like is some of the neck to about here. I just need to get them made really for me rather than make them myself. Um, I'm not a hammer maker. Much easier to just put a bit of money towards it and get it done properly by someone who knows what they're doing. So if you've got any suggestions on that, by all means drop them below and I'll give them a shout. something worth just spending two seconds on here is I've seen um, when I've done uh, tuition with some uh, places like at West Dean or here in the workshop and so on is when folks just do rough planishing out like I'm doing here I'm just trying to get the vague shape uniform is, is they, they spend hours and hours sometimes and, and not really doing an awful lot and one way to see if you are actually deforming the piece I'm not going to say doing it right but um, because because you might not be I might not be um, but one of the ways you can tell if you're actually doing anything to the metal is do you get any on these initial passes any hammer scale moving so if you're doing this for ages and not a lot happens I'm not actually doing a lot to the work I'm just tickling it uh, with the hammer what you need to do is get it in. actually hitting it and what happens is you'll start to get cracks and fractures appear in the hammer scale uh, the blackened bit on the top because what you're doing is you're actually moving the material you can see on the surface there you can see the areas I've struck and areas I haven't and this will uh, help guide you when you're working well, one do you need to even be there if not a lot's happening and you're sure you're hitting it hard because then there's very little undulation in the material uh, to be put straight um, but what you're doing is it just gives you a nice ready guide uh, whether you're actually doing any work or just mucking about. So, like when I can see the shape's just about here. What I'm looking to do, if we look on the end here, you see how this line's all wobbly. I, I have very little registration there as to the actual shape I need. Which line am I following? Is it, is it this sort of bit here? You see there's a nice section there. Is it, is it 
should it be this curve? And what I do is if I get that all uniform, then I can start to just think of it in a much grander sweep of opening and closing this uh, in the areas it needs. And where are we here? What's crossing my see how it comes around here a bit straight. If I just push that out, it's not going to do anything. I'll go from that edge, trying to, if I, I'll go from there to there. Well, that's no good. What I need is I need this bit to come back down. So often, if you see that shape, what it can mean is you have a flat along this section. I'll come back a bit. Where are we here? And there's a mighty great flat just here. Pretty well tonked it to bring it around a couple of hammer marks in there. So it's, it's flattened here. And that's what's creating this shape and sort of balloony bit. I need to get that out, but I want it to come up a little bit. Now I can do that a couple of ways. I can work it on a flat angle, but I don't want to work it down into the material there like that. So all I'm going to do is that slight raise that's in there now, I'm just going to flatten the anvil shape into it. So if you don't have dips and scallops and bits and pieces, find the area you want to work, and depending on which way you want the curve to go, lift the piece off and support it, say, down there, and strike there. So if I do that now, it will push that material down towards the anvil. Now walk it out to the end, otherwise what I'm doing is I'm creating a football shape. The run of that will go like that and it'll end up digging in the leg, so I need this bit to flatten. out. a nice bit of mild steel I can do this if it was um, a higher carbon content I'd struggle probably moving it to be honest what well, happens with that and push it down so you do this sort of thing hot I would suggest and sometimes if you, if you can do it over a, 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 a dish or something like that and you put the area into the dish you're not looking to force that then into the actual dish shape what you're doing is you're just using that void rather than here you see occasionally if I miss blow I'll just pull it straight down to the anvil that would be a wasted movement but because it's a nice bit of mild, I tend to be able to get away with it. And if you heat too much material as well, it's worth thinking if this was red hot and that's red hot and I'm striking here, what I'll probably be doing is pushing that anvil shape into this space. So you need to be careful of your heat as well. where I haven't hit. You see, if I look to the hammer marks on the inside here and where it's all scaling around and the bruising, the shiny bits, I can see I've not hit it here. When I turn it over, that's there. I can still see, well, I can feel it's just too flat. There's a curve here, then it goes straight across, then it curves again. So I need to get that bit moving. So I'll give it another try on this and I'll show you the other way I do it. So it's coming, but it's taking a bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch it across to the stake over here, and we'll have another goal. I'll show you another technique that I use, and then we'll close it down on one final technique. So I won't try and solve it completely. We'll just have another go over here. So we're back. Um, I'm not quite sure how far I got with that one because the um, battery cut out. But you can see over there um, on the slight dish, it wasn't quite man enough. I, I could have probably persevered and in a bit of heat but I want to show different techniques and different ways of resolving this problem. So if I show that up to the camera there, you can see I've got this flat. And that's not just a flat on the edge, that flat extends like that. Okay, it's just not quite working at either of those techniques, you know, and that's fine. Sometimes you do this and you pop about from technique to technique and seven, eight times out of ten you get it and then every now and then you go, ah, oh, screw it, and you've got to get back to um, the beginning. So where I am is I'm on this stump. Uh, I'm not going to heat this because like I've said before it's mild steel and I'll ease it off a bit later. Um, not that you can really heat treat mild steel too much but you know it just makes me feel better in myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to force this area up flat there down into this. I'm going to try and open that out a bit so that I can really work into this space. Uh, get that curve I need in there and then when I put it back rather than this ugly flat uh, we'll actually have the um, space that I want. Now, there's a couple of ways really because you've got to get in there you want a hammer with a bit of depth and a bit of reach to it. It's no good me trying to do this 
with a, I don't know, clutch a hammer, with a hammer like that. What's going What's going to happen there is I'm just going to be misstriking, going to be murdering my hammers and my tools. So you want one with a bit of reach. And like I say, I've, I've got a, a gap in my hammer arsenal, should we say there. Um, another way you can do this, I'll try and use both, is with that. But the thing to watch, if you're doing something like this and you're using this spoke to see what I'm going to see this, if you strike there and you spin that round and that hits your hand, Oh good lord, tears are out. That really, really hurts. I've managed to chip a bone in my hand once doing that right on a knuckle. And man alive, it was painful. I had to go and sit down and have a whole slice of cake and a cup of tea after that. So be careful of that. So you want to make sure you're reaching it long rather than throttling the uh, steak. But to avoid that, I'm going to stick with my trusty hammer. So get my ears on and then we'll um, touch that down. Oh, it's something that's worth mentioning. If you find you're doing work like this and it starts to hurt this hand, you've got to think about how long are you planning on doing this. If you're going to a lifetime of armouring, get some tongs, some pliers, some mole grips and hold on to it there. I'll see how I go, um, but generally try and use either like that or like that. Try to avoid that. Can you see what I'm doing there? Yeah, just about. Try and avoid that with your thumb. So if that smacks around, um, that's quite an exquisite amount of um, pain you're in. So either get the thumb running along it like that, or just out of the way altogether. As with everything, don't try and do this in a too monstrous hit. Walk it into it. See if it's doing what you want it to do. And I can see there that curve is starting to appear in this material. Up here, nothing yet because I've not got there. I walk it up into it. Remember, if I'm holding that flat and hitting there, that will be getting flatter for the time being. So don't judge what's going on there quite yet because you're not there. Work along this bottom bit. jump about in my hand now. So I'll take my own advice, get the tongs, and examine it, lift out some of the pain. So what about this end here kicking up? That's just because it's catching on there. What we're concentrating on is this space. Worry about the things that we've got to worry about and then we'll dress the rest back after. See now, apart from just up here, let me around up catching the light in different ways, you'll see it. We've got that curvature that I wanted. I noticed the knockout at the beginning there. Now we've got to work our way around up the top here. So you can we can see from the scuffing there, that's been resting on this edge and just monkeying about and pushing itself back. Now a bit of heat on there and tap it down from the inside, that's one way of doing it. You can work it around a bit on this. You've got to be careful, if you're striking this hard, this is a bit moved around now, so it's getting a bit more pliable, so we need to give it a bit of um, care and attention in a minute. So you can be hitting that there, get the perfect curve there, and push the dent back in there. So be aware of it as you're working. together we got a bit of a nasty crease in there but you know these are all things we can work our way around. I'm going to get that edge down so I'm going to go back on the anvil and work on it. Because my battery died I had to do the other one. And you can see on this one it behaved itself a bit more. So 
we've got a reasonably uniform curve in there. I haven't started planishing this through yet, but you can see how it's behaved itself that little bit more. Bits and pieces still need doing. But you know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you can be faffing about for a little while on something like this. So what I want to do is I want to find something to take that curve out. First thing I want to do is push that down and uniform that curve and get rid of these creases and little uh, dents and bits I've got in here because they will mess me about, particularly when I come to put in uh, the rib on the top. So I want to find something to push that down over. This will be the anvil. Then we'll come back and we'll use a large ball stake or maybe even this just to smooth it off and then dress it to the size we need it to be. So back to the anvil then. And I want to, you can see there's a, there's a ballooning going on here. Just fine. I'm going to push this down a bit, just along here. So coming out of the space over there means that I've not got anything pushing on here, or not quite as much. It doesn't matter too much if I stretch this area along here, because I'm going to do that as soon as I put this one, get to the rib anyway. So I get mad, um, but you know you can be a bit careless with what's going on if you do strike it against the anvil. the two actions you've got so you've been pushing down on there driving back on this one and melting together there we go see so we've got a bit more of a uniform curve going on there I just want to turn it up a little bit just because I know it will bite on the back side in a moment. So I'm just going to tidy that up, probably over, open it right out over the edge of the uh, dishing form I have over there. So back to the last movement of this part of the uh, exercise we're doing, which is just the, the basic roughing out and shaping. Like I say, I want to open that out a bit. I don't, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's just a bit too curved there for this stage in the build, for my way of working anyway. So. Get that up on its edge. But generally, when you've had one of these taken off the bottom of a tank, you've got a nice round edge here and a sharp edge there. Work with that bit into the work. What I'm going to do, because this is mild, is just open that out, ease the whole thing off. Now, I guess this carbon, yeah, you, know, you can try this, but just be careful of that ping up and hit you in the face. I can see by doing something like this, where's it, where's it stressing out? So it's opening there, there's a curve there, it's opening out a bit here. So I've got two different curves going on there. So I want to dress those down. If I open it out like this, I can see where the stresses and strains are on it. Let me move that, let's see if we can get this in there. You can see, there we go. We've got a curve, different types of curves. So I've got a curve here different type of curve there and then the remains of that flat there what's happening is they're all working against each other this is resisting movement Where are we? so this is resisting that's it we get the a little bit there we go that's better so this is resisting movement that wants to stay flat and this bit's just going wherever the others push it to you see what I mean though if I push that down See that? It's resisted the movement. Got a curve there, and we've got a flat air. I need to dress this all off, so what I want to do is I'm going to push this down so it starts to mimic these a bit more. And I can see there, that one is doing, I'm going to exaggerate now, but just there, that's coming off this curve, and then it's still doing that. So, you know, monkeying about with this one a bit, it's misbehaving, but it makes for a bit more of an interesting video, I suspect. A bit more useful. So I hope, anyway. So, I'm going to start to push that back and turn this into that uniform shape that I'm after. So the old steak will do. <clears throat> I just want something with a large enough 
uh, what was that? Circumference to work this across. Try and even things out a little bit. And I want to ease him off a bit, so get him over there. Just be careful not to pull it that way so it doesn't go off the edge there because you've done something like that. ease them out. I'm going to ease this one off a bit as well. So what I'm doing, taking it just, taking it, hitting it like that because it's just going to follow the curve. I want it like that and then it can it up a little bit. Then I can work that back. So put that in there. this just on the end here because I can get myself in a sense of um, full sense of security because I'm if you just work this edge here you'll get that to shape but the rest of it hasn't moved so you've got to make sure all the work you're doing goes throughout the whole thing and you can couple it up with a little bit of like vanishing as well so here that's up a bit so I've put it on there and then I've pulled it that way to tap him down The hammer's doing the work and the stake is more of a support. I'm not going I'm not going, do it on. I'm not going and hitting that surface. I'm actually over here pulling the work over there and the stake is just the support inside. There we go. So there's a few bits and pieces here I've been working it which I want to get that all pulled out. I'll do that from the inside when I start to do the first real sort of rough planish to the piece. What I've got there is the almost So I'm just easing it all together now in my little shape here. Never letting it rest in one place in here because I don't want to put a flat in it. And that's what's going on. There we go, we've got our curve in there, it's just about uniform. A little bit lazy just here. But I'm going to leave that as is for the minute because I think I'm going to want to keep that shape. Ease it. Maybe just a bit actually. So I've used this slightly rounded faced hammer because as I hit, that will stop to help put that curve in. It curve to start down here. So there we go, we've got our curvature in, still got a stack of work to do, but there, that's how you rough out the basics of the course. So the next step that I'd go through now is I'd give it a quick rough planish out, get all these bits working so I think I can um, get them into the articulations and just give it a quick rough check for size on the polling. But I'll give it a quick um, planish through first just to get all these last little lumps and bumps out um, and then we'll uh, yeah, pick up after that.